Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. In today's video we're going to talk about getting a dental hygienist license as a foreign trained dentist. It is a subject that I have started on Instagram and it became kind of heated so I decided to make a full-on video answering every question that I received on my Instagram and if you're interested in receiving a dental hygienist license or really just want to find out how to work in the United States before you go to dental school, keep on watching. If you have, but first of all, if you have never been here before, if you have no idea who I am, my name is Casey and I'm a foreign trained dentist from Russia and I've been helping foreign trained dentists to get licensed in the United States for a very long time now, for around six years now. So I'm an expert, a self-proclaimed expert in the field. All right, so once you move to the United States, you have to do something, right? The application process takes a while. Of course, if you're not applying from your home country, if you're moving into the United States for unrelated to education reasons, and you're trying to kind of find out what to do and how to make money, obvious thought is dental assisting. But there are actually three things that you could do. Uh, one of them is dental assisting, that's correct. Second one is the limited license, which I talk about extensively in other videos, which I'm gonna link somewhere over here and down in the description below. So you can go check those out if you're interested and also of course dental hygiene so with dental assisting even it's very simple you don't really have to do anything additional at least in most states to receive your dental assistance certificate that's because that's what we all do that is very common most people have gone through assisting and that's what they do before they go to dental school assisting pays very little so it's natural for people to look for other ways to actually make money assisting usually pays around 20 ish dollars per, per hour i pay my assistant 28 dollars an hour which is fine ish salary you can find a higher paying job as well it's not a limit but in general it is probably the least paid job you can find aside of like sterilization tech naturally we're looking for other ways to make money because the application process and just life in and of itself is very expensive out of all these three ways that I have mentioned the dental hygiene license is very controversial why because it sounds very good right it sounds very good and easy to just work as a dental hygienist kind of forget about dentistry the pay for dental hygienist is very competitive it's around $60 an hour these days and it of course state by state I'm in Boston Massachusetts it's one of the most expensive states in the country so dental hygiene and salary is over $60 per hour here which is amazing it's twice the salary of the dental assistant if not more also being a dental hygienist you can actually work with patients you can feel a little bit more independent you can actually do something on your own and have your own schedule feel like a working professional like you used to be a dentist back in the day but as I mentioned before when I started discussing that on Instagram they people divided into two different groups. One who are very pro dental hygiene and one group that are very against. I'm the leader of the very against kind of group and I will discuss why I don't think you should pursue that path. But if you're interested in my opinion on that, you can follow me on Instagram, it's Casey Does Dentistry, just like this channel. And in the highlights hygiene license, you can find all of this all of this feud there. But the main question is how do you actually get the dental hygiene license? And it's not that easy. Yes, you can just go in and get yourself a dental hygiene license and work as a dental hygienist, but only in one state. If you're in Florida, the Mecca for foreign trained dentists, it's probably the easiest state to get licensed in general, but as a dental hygienist particularly, they basically give out those licenses there. All you need to do is just apply for it. That's all you need to do. There are of course requirements and I'm simplifying it. And down below in the description, I will link the link to their board, which describes it particularly. But here in my laptop, I also have it pulled up. And basically what they say, you have to be either a graduate of an accredited dental hygienist college in the United States, which is obviously understandable, or they specifically mention or is a graduate of an unaccredited dental college or school and has completed a minimal of four years of post-secondary dental education and received a dental school diploma which is compatible to DDS or DMD, a foreign trained dentist. So they specifically mention it on their website pretty much right on top. But the other thing that they mention is the state of Florida does not have reciprocity with any state and does not issue licenses by endorsement or credentials. Basically that means that you cannot take the license of Florida and go to another state and practice, which is one of the most common questions when it comes to a uh, dental hygiene license in Florida. Can you actually be not in Florida and have their license, but then go and work in another state? And unfortunately, this 
said and this is one of the first sentences on their website that no they don't have reciprocity means that they you can't practice on florida license in other states with that being said can you apply to another license having held a license in florida and here the margins are kind of blurred here we're talking about very specific state rules and they of course differ state by state talking to my instagram community i have learned that you can transfer florida license to dc uh, i have not confirmed it myself and i have not seen it written anywhere i haven't contacted the dc board but it's something to dig into i would assume that they would require you to practice for at least some amount of years um, in florida where you received your license i don't think you can just come to florida for a weekend get yourself a license as a dental hygienist and move to dc and work there i don't not think that how it works because people are not stupid uh, so they probably would require you to work for at least a little bit in, in Florida, just like a dental license. You know, once you receive your dental license in one state, you can practice there for at least five years and transfer it to a different state. That is a common practice. So I assume hygienist license is similar, but that requires you to work for at least a little bit. So as a general rule, if you do receive your dental hygienist license in Florida, I wouldn't expect that you can easily transfer it to another state. So be wary of that. If you're planning to find your way to Florida, uh, kind of be careful with that because you might not be able to practice anywhere else. All right, so Florida, we figured out that we can get licensed. So what exactly do they need for you to get? So you can't, even though it sounds like you have super easy, you can just waltz in to a licensing board and be like, one license, please. You do have to pass some exams. You would need your transcript. And I always had issues with my transcript because from I'm from Eastern Europe, Eastern Europe, I'm from Russia, that's a former Soviet country, and bureaucracy there is through the roof. They require you to send your transcripts directly from the school to the board. That requires your person in your school to print those transcripts, sign them, put a stamp on them, put them in, in an envelope, seal it with a stamp, and mail it to Florida. If you're from Russia or from Ukraine, or from any other post-Soviet Republic, just have a little laugh to yourself and imagine a person from the Dean's office going and printing your transcript and sending it directly. So that could be an issue. Think about how you're going to give them your transcripts in English from directly your school to their board. That's something that you do have to do. I have talked about it before in my dental assistant certificate video, so I'm gonna link that below as well. But that is that might be a problem you would need your transcripts directly from the school in florida you do have to pass an exam so it's a national board exam you have an option though you can either take inbd which is a dental board or you can take a dental hygiene board they're very similar if you have not passed your inbd yet if you are just thinking about it or if you can't pass it to save your life, and I know people like that as well, you can just take an, a dental hygienist board. They're not much easier, but they're much less bio, anatomy, all that kind of stuff. They are pretty simple for a dentist. They're very doable, so you can take either or. If you already have taken your INBD, and if your goal is to become a dentist, you probably have already have it anyway, so might as well use that. So you don't really basically need to take any additional exams for that. Another thing that you do have to take is the ADEX exam, and a lot of people asking me what's ADEX, that is basically the practical skill exam it used to be called reb they were region specific so they would have different names in different parts of the country but this particular one they kind of united it all and the only person who doesn't follow this adax exam is new york for some reason but in florida basically it means that you will have to make some practical skills test it's either on live patients which you would have to find or i think last year or a few years ago they have transferred it to a mannequin so you just have to show up to a testing center and show that you can scrape calculus off of it type it on incredibly easy i have taken that as well as part of my period requirement for a dental school so it's super easy don't even worry about it it's easy to prepare i believe there's a, a test part but after you take inbd uh, it is really not something to worry about. So ADEX is another test that you have to take, which involves practical skills, but it's not something that you have to worry about too much. It's very doable. Another thing that you have to take for Florida uh, dental hygiene license is their law exam. Law exams are difficult, but doable, of course. Law exam means you have to know some laws of the state. They're usually ethics and law combined. Uh, I, I have taken one in Massachusetts for my dental license and it, it requires work. You don't have to like go to a testing center or anything. They email you the list of questions and you take it from home on your own time, which is 
easier, but it don't think that it's going to be like one and done. It requires a full day of concentration. It is pretty difficult. It requires research because obviously you don't know the laws. You have to like read through all of the bylaws. It requires good knowledge of English. Even if you didn't take TOEFL, you still have to know some English to understand what the hell they're talking about there. So law exam is tricky, but again, not, not much to worry about it. You can take it from home. And the last thing that you would need for your license in Florida is the CPR, which is completely common. It's just, you know, the hard and long reanimation and you will need it for dental assisting as well. So that's Florida. If you find yourself in Florida, if you live in Florida, if you have a possibility to move to Florida, getting a dental hygienist license is super easy. Just like basically getting a dental license too. They're most liberal state in giving licenses to foreign trained dentists. So I highly recommend living in Florida or going to Florida, or if you have an opportunity to move to Florida, it is honestly the best state for dentists in the United States. So that's how you get a license there. But what if you are not in Florida? I'm not in Florida. I have no desire to live in Florida. Florida sounds awful for me because I'm a Northern person and I hate heat. So if you are just like me and you want to live in another state and you don't have any opportunity to move to Florida to get a license there, what about other states? That's where it comes to controversial. That's when it comes to a heated conversation because yes, you can get a license to do dental hygiene as a foreign trained dentist somewhere else, but you would have to go to school. That is the caveat. They would give it to you, but you actually have to complete some kind of education in other states. And education means one years of work. It's never less than a year. It's always more than one year than 12 months. It's, it's quite difficult. And the other thing is it requires financial investment. Let's talk about schools. How do the schools work? Dental hygiene degree divides in two categories. It's either bachelor's degree, just kind of a college degree, what you know, what Americans call college here. It's a bachelor degree or another is like a, a associate degree. I don't know what the difference is because the license is exactly the same. They do exactly the same work. Bachelor's degree is three to four years. So it's a long one. It's basically college education. And the associate's degree is only two years. So sometimes they can even be fast tracked. So they can vary from 12 months to 18 months on a fast track but still it's you know 18 months it's almost two years it's time it's it's your time that you are educating yourself on a thing you don't want to do forever price wise they vary as well so bachelor bachelor's degree usually is a more expensive one associate's degree is a little bit cheaper but regardless it would cost over twenty thousand dollars i wouldn't i don't think you can find a school lower than twenty thousand dollar in tuition I don't believe many of you guys just have $20,000 laying around in your pocket. So it's something that student loans would be required. Again, this is your time and this is your money. Considering you don't want to be a dental hygienist as your end goal, to me, I consider it a total waste. But again, there are people who think it's helpful for them. It would raise your salary, but it wouldn't bring you to your end goal of being a dentist at all. And we're going to talk about all of these assumptions a little bit later in the video. Talking about fast track programs and faster programs for foreign trained dentists, there's one specific program that I found that is targeted to foreign trained dentists. It's an NYU. It's a 12 months fast track program. And I have, I will link that link down below as well. So you can check it out for yourself, but they don't really talk about tuition conveniently. And I did type talk to one graduate of that program and she's very happy with it. She's happy that she can practice hygiene, but she said it's around a hundred thousand dollars. So you just invested a hundred thousand dollars. And again, this is not confirmed. So please don't yell at me. So I, I have no idea how much it costs. I couldn't find it on their website. I assume you have to contact them to find out, but regardless of how much it is, you are investing that money in your education. All right. So let's talk about what you actually need to apply to NYU. If you're interested, you, and you want to know like, what is it required for me to actually become a student in the, one of those programs? First of all, you need to write an essay. You need to write a personal statement. I always say that the personal statement is the most important part of every application. So they require a really extensive personal statement of about 500 words. So that's a lot. So this is a big, personal statement. So you would need to know a reason. You would have to have a really good reasoning of why you actually want to be hygienist and not the dentist, considering you're a dentist in a different country. Another thing you would need is TOEFL over a hundred, which you basically need anyway for your dental schools. So it's not like requirements are easier if you're not speaking English very well. And that's what is the limiting factor for you to apply to dental school. This is not going to help you. It requires a TOEFL of over a hundred as well. So you need to pass INBD, which again, you are required to pass 
for the blind to dental school. So again, if that's something that stops you, you will need this anyway. Um, you need to be a resident of the United States. So that's important that cuts a large part of a population. You do need to be a resident. You need to pass a test. So their website is not very particular, but it, as much as I could understand, it's a, it's not like a bench test. It's a clinical situation test. So they would ask you like, what's this condition? What would you do in this situation? So that's something that you need to pass during your interview. And the application opens uh, around July 1st. So if you're kind of wondering when do I start applying, the application is mid-July. And that's NYU. As I mentioned, it's around $100,000. Um, it's pretty expensive. I wouldn't expect it to be super cheap. But again, the requirements are as strict as they are required to be for dental school. So what is the difference? It's just basically you need your INBD, you need your TOEFL, might as well apply to dental school. There are other schools that offer fast track in other states. So it's not just the NYU. I found one in Massachusetts, in Boston, that offers a fast track program, but that is not specifically targeted to foreign trained dentists. So basically when this program in NYU, it doesn't talk much about the curriculum. You can read up more on that if you're interested, but fast track for international den international dentist means that they most likely shorten the program. So they make it less dense, assuming that you already, you already know something from your school. When it comes to other programs that are not international dentist specific, they don't shorten anything. They give you all of it, but condensed in 17 to 19 months. So meaning you will still have to pass intense amount of exa exams that most students take within four years of their education, you will have to take them in 17 months. So it's a very, very intense, very difficult program, very heavy education wise. There are good news if you're thinking that, okay, that sounds terrible. Well, there are good news as well, because some of the programs that are three to four years in length do offer student visas and they are cheaper. As I mentioned, they're still all of this with all this being said, they're still cheaper than dental schools. So if you're in your home country and you understand like, okay, that's a bit too much for me. Dental schools are difficult to pull and I'm not a resident. I don't really have any other way some of them some dental hygiene schools do offer student visas so that could be a valid way for you if you're still in your home country to actually enter the United States and get yourself a student visa which allows you to work for at least a year and I have an extensive video on that as well and I will link it down below also just for you to kind of learn more about that you can work after that too it could be a valid way of entry so it would only be beneficial for people who are still in their home country and don't know how else to enter the United States. They're bad news also. And I think in my honest opinion, they're more bad news than they're good news. So like, why would you possibly do that? Why would you want to do that? Because my philosophy, my personal philosophy is that you should take the shortest possible route to the place where you want to end up. If your goal is to be a dentist, not a dental hygienist, a dentist, why would you possibly apply, invest your time and money into a school that is only gonna bring you to a midpoint? If you think that it's gonna boost your application somehow, I don't believe that's true because one, you will have to explain to dental schools after you're done with all this hygiene stuff, you will have to explain to dental schools why being such a wonderful student, as we all try to describe ourselves, why won't you just apply to dental schools? You would have to explain to them in your personal statement, you have to be very strategic in that case about your application, why you thought it would be good for you to become a hygienist first. So it will show you as an insecure person. It just will show you like, as you're not certain in your clinical skills, as you're not a good dentist, basically. So that's something that will have to be considered in your application. Another thing that would bring you down and actually will jeopardize your application is if you're applying to dental hygienist programs, studying in those programs, and at the same time applying to dental schools. So I know for a fact that dental schools don't like pooling students from other programs. And I've been told that by BU Dental Admissions Committee. So that's a precise information. If they see that a student is in a different program, they don't want to take him away from that program. So you can you literally reduce your chances of getting accepted if you're already in a, in a dental hygiene program. So why would you possibly do that? The very common misconception is that you can boost your GPA through going to a dental hygienist program. It is absolutely not true because they will always look at your dental school GPA. They will always take your EC transcripts from your dental school and look at them and rank you according to the score, according to your dental school GPA. Yes, you can explain if your dental school GPA is very low and you can say like, okay, don't look at me back then. Look at me now. I went to this other program and I was an amazing student and I got all A's. 
yes, you can kind of wiggle your way around it and explain it in your personal statement and explain it in your application. But again, it will not touch your dental school GPA. That's what they need to see. They need to see your dental school GPA. In that sense, if you're trying to explain to them that you're a better student now and back then you were an idiot and a child and didn't know what you needed in life and now you're this genius who really wants to learn, much more beneficial for you would be a master's program because master's programs are more education heavy. They're targeting a little bit different concepts. They're more research heavy. They're more theoretical rather than dental hygiene programs that are more practical. They're teaching you to scrape teeth because that's what hygienists do. It's not that scientific of a program. So if you're trying to show them that you're better student that's probably your way to go because obviously if you're a dentist you have clinical skills you don't need to show that you learned how to scrape teeth better right you don't need to show them that you can do cleanings better now it's not really going to bring you up so if you're trying to kind of prove to the school that you're a better student mph would be a better way to consider rather than a dental hygiene program so there are common arguments that i hear when it comes to dental hygiene programs and when i mentioned it on my instagram i was very I was notified basically that I'm very privileged and I have a husband who took care of me whilst I was in dental school and I didn't have to take care of myself because I had somebody else to work, which is not true, very much not true. And, and there's a video where I talk about how my entire situation went through and I will link it down below as well so you could watch that stuff too. But nobody took care of me basically. My husband was in law school at the time so we were both student and it was really difficult and YouTube took care of me so I was working basically two jobs. But it doesn't matter. Beyond that, obviously dental schools are expensive. Obviously, you know, you if you're alone or even if you have a family, you have to support the family somehow. You have to have somebody to pay for your living. But again, if you think that dental hygiene will help you, you still have to invest in a program. You still have to pay for it. You still have to be in school as a student. And when it comes to one of those fast track programs, they're very intense. So it's not like you will have infinite amount of time to work and save up for your future dental school. You will still have to invest and you will probably don't have the tuition, even if it's very low, you don't have it lying around of free money that you can just invest. You will probably apply to some kind of student loan. So you basically will take a loan to not get another loan. It, and again, if you're original point is to go to dental school. Don't start that dental school with a student loan. Get one student loan for dental school, not another student loan for a completely different program. So that's what doesn't really make sense for me because student loans do cover your living. They do cover your food, transportation, all of that is accounted for in the student loans that you have to later pay. So it makes more sense to get a higher loan. Yes, it's more expensive, but you get that one loan, not two loans, one loan that you pay with your higher salary. Financially, it's a better decision to go to a dental school rather than a dental hygiene school, even if your financial situation is very restrained. Um, yes, applications do cost money, but much less money than going to a different education program. If you're a resident of the United States, FAFSA, so the government loans are amazing and they have a very low percentage. So they have very low interest rates that you will have to pay yearly. They're very cheap loans. So you wouldn't even have to hurry out to pay them out because you will have other loans. You'll have mortgage, you'll have car lease that are much higher interest rates. So they're more expensive loans rather than this cheap loan. Obviously, everyone's situation is different, but as a conclusion of everything, Thing that I said here, dental hygienist program is not going to boost your application and it's not going to bring you money. You will have to still invest money. Don't think that it's free. With all this being said, so we talked about basically free license in Florida that you should definitely take if you are in Florida and applying to schools to get a hygiene license someplace else. What you need to consider is what is your goal? That is what it all comes to. If your goal is to be a dentist and you know for a fact that, look, I cannot be a hygienist. I cannot be an assistant forever. I am a dentist with experience and I want to practice my skill on patients rather than doing cleanings and respond to somebody else who is a dentist in the practice. I want to be a dentist. This is your goal. So don't take any detours. Don't take any other turnaround routes and get, get yourself on a different loan and different program. That doesn't make sense. But if your goal is to just, I'm just moved to the US, I wanna work. Then you can consider getting a hygienist license and get into the hygienist program. But you have to understand that in this case, your goal is not to be a dentist. Your goal is to support yourself. Your goal is to get a competitive salary of $60 an hour as a hygienist. 
And don't tell me that I will become a dentist faster or somehow make my application better if I get complete this dental hygienist license. If your goal is to support yourself and just make money, you don't have to invest in a school for that. You can work for dental insurance companies. You can work for, you know, just dental unrelated jobs that are paying higher. You can work as a dental equipment rep because you do have experience in dentistry. You don't need any education for that. And the salary is better than a dental assistant, but it's not going to bring you any closer to dental school, just like dental hygiene will not bring you closer to dental school. So there are other ways that don't require you to invest that can bring you higher salary than a dental assistant. So and again, in this point, I just don't understand how that would make sense. So in conclusion, after this long rambly video, if you're in Florida, go for a dental hygiene license. They're basically throwing them out of the truck there. So just get yourself a license. It's free. Why wouldn't you? It will give you a higher salary. Yes, you will show them that you're a little bit different than everybody else who is an assistant. You're a hygienist. It didn't cost you anything. Great. I did say that on my Instagram and valid point from people in Florida who told me like, look, I don't want to be a hygienist. It's a very mundane job and I would rather be an assistant and learn from dentists who are working in front of me who I can ask questions. That's why I'm in Florida and I didn't get a dental hygienist license and instead I became a dental assistant. Valid point, so that's up to you to decide, but you just know that you have that option there. And if you're not in Florida, in my honest opinion, it's a waste of time. So it's up to you to decide. And that's basically all I have to say about hygienist license and being a dental hygienist as a foreign trained dentist. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want more information of how to become a dentist or how to work in the United States, I do offer consultations and all the information on that will be down below in the description. And the best way to support my channel is to buy my book. I wrote a step-by-step -step guide on how to become a licensed dentist in the United States. It's very inexpensive, but packed with information. It's going to really show you the way of how to get there. It's an ebook, so you don't have to have it delivered and all in information on that is down in the description below as well and that's the best way to support my channel and thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next one bye